Hello, Glendale. I'm Meg Keller. And I'm Luke Miller. You're watching the fifth episode of the Glendale 411. Glendale alumni Derek Roberts recently began his own radio show at Evangel University. Carrie Jones and Sarah Snelson report. Technically, I am doing the radio show by myself. I'm the only one enrolled in the class. I don't have a co-host. But um, we can have special guests whenever we want. And so I just kind of bring in Josh Ballard, who went to Glendale, and then a guy named Alex Talbot, who plays on Evangel's football team that went to Parkview. And I just kind of bring them in, and I like to pretend like they're the co-hosts because they come in every week. They do just as equal shares of work that I do, but they're just not enrolled in the class. I began the radio show with Derek because he was uh, signed up for a class, and at first it was kind of just like a get-through-the-class type thing, and uh, he had to have his own radio show, and so he ended up asking me to come along and help him out because... He needed some extra time to kill, and killing two hours yeah. by yourself isn't yeah. very easy. I started the show because I needed a credit hour for a radio workshop or a television or a newspaper. And I've already kind of done, like, newspaper back when I was at Glendale with the yearbook, so I wanted to try something new. We cover topics like sports as far as the Chiefs and the Cowboys specifically. The radio show is just a super great time and so every Thursday, it's like one o'clock on Thursday is one of my favorite times of the week to just come in here and talk sports with my friends. But I mean, like, the move to my favorite part about the radio show is probably just that I get to sit and relax and do something that I'm comfortable doing, which is just talking sports. I mean, me and Derek have grown up since we were like fifth grade, just talking sports all the time. So just put a mic in front of our faces and there's really nothing that's different about it. Derek was never given the opportunity to pursue radio at Glendale. Glendale should definitely offer radio. Um, I know they offer a yearbook and newspaper and uh, the 411. And we all have that here at Evangel, but the only thing that's missing is radio. So I feel like radio isn't dying at all. It's just changing. And so I feel like a lot of high schools could get on board Maybe not broadcast over FM, but have little podcasts for people. Um, that way they can listen to. So yes, definitely. The advice I would have to give to people who um, really aren't sure if they want to do radio or if they want to do radio is basically just find what you're passionate about. You know, you never know if you're going to like it until you try it. Some advice I would give to someone if they wanted to be on would be just to be yourself. The radio is all about having a personality because there's no, you know, picture, no anything like that. So you can show up in your sweatpants and stuff, but as long as you bring your personality with you, then at the end of the day, people are going to want to listen. And uh, I give the football team shouts or shout outs all the time on my show. Just each week when they win, I'm like, shout out to Glenda, you know, 9-0 and now. So good job. Keep it rolling. Go to state. Nothing makes you feel stronger than overcoming towering obstacles. Tanner Brady, McGuire Stride, and Julia Weber share the inspiration for the new Zenith Climbing Gym. Just off of Sunshine and only a couple blocks from Glendale is the region's new and only rock climbing gym, Zenith Climbing Center. We started about three years ago now, and uh, we uh, actually went to the drawing board uh, with, with business plans, everything, right around that time. Uh, I started climbing about nine years ago now, and then from there it's been an addiction. It's just been one of those things that we started climbing, and we were really interested in it, and it was super fun. So then uh, our climbing gym actually shut down about a year ago, and we decided, well, I think we really need to make this happen here. We already loved it. We knew a lot of our friends loved it. So we're like, well, if there's not a climbing gym, we'll just open one because we know there's a need for it. We know people are going to come, so we might as well just do it. Along with different forms of rock climbing, Zenith also offers various other activities for the community. We offer uh, four different styles of climbing here at the gym. The uh, first style is um, bouldering, another form of climbing called top roping, another form of climbing we have is lead climbing. You've also got one other thing that we offer, um, and this is if someone doesn't have a belay partner with them for the day, um, we actually have uh, four auto belays. We also have a uh, weights uh, room up on top of our first top out boulder, 
Um, and then we also have a yoga studio as well. As an activity, it's just such a good full body workout. It's a mental workout. It was something that I could do that was working out but didn't feel like working out. But even if you don't want to like work out super hard one day, you can still come to the gym and like see your friends and socialize and just hang out. Glendale students can participate in rock climbing through the competitive or the recreational activities that Zenith provides. Zenith offers uh, youth climbing teams, both recreational and competitive. So we actually have a high school team called the Core Team. It's for climbers uh, 11 years old through 18 years old. And um, they start out in the Core Team. And then once they advance enough, they can try out for the competitive team. And we actually have a competition November 12th of this year. So there's enough time to get in and start um, trying to get competitive. We actually really want to start like even competitive stuff um, where, you know, uh, there will be a Glendale team, you know, Kickapoo team, all that kind of stuff. So you all have something to sort of uh, compete with, almost like our football, our soccer, everything else. It's just our dream. It's um, ever since Everett and I started dating, this was our shared dream. We both loved rock climbing. And every climber thinks like, oh, it'd be so cool to open a gym one day. Zenith and its owners have planned years ahead of them with help for the community, expansion, and school programs. We just want to get closer to the community. That's our biggest goal and that's the biggest reason why we actually started this gym is because we're very interested in investing into this community. Signing off from the Zenith Climbing Center for the Glendale 4 on 1, this is Tanner Brady, Julia Weber, and McGuire Stroud. For most college students, fall means football, midterms, and friends. However, this fall, some students were surprised to find their school closed. Maddie Jones and I find out why. More than 100 ITT Technical Institute campuses shut down in early September. The Springfield campus was one of the four locations in Missouri to close. The closures were brought about by new regulations from the U.S. Department of Education that cracked down on ITT Tech. For-profit schools are out there to make money off of the students. Uh, that's essentially what for-profit means. They, um, they're going to be raising costs to make sure that they're paying their executives and administrators. They're running their, their school as more of a business than OTC or Drury or MSU run theirs as a business. According to the National Center for Education Statistics, in 2012 to 2013, the average cost of attendance for ITT tech students was $22,500. In that same year, the average price of attendance at Ozarks Technical Community College was only $6,161. OTC officials were not sad to see ITT Tech close its doors. People are spending thousands of dollars at a place like ITT Tech and really getting a degree that is nearly worthless, uh, whereas they could come to OTC, spend a fraction of the money they'd be spending at ITT Tech and getting a a uh, degree that's very valuable. ITT Tech students now have the opportunity to attend OTC, but they are faced with a grim choice. If they transfer any credits whatsoever and they want to qualify for loan forgiveness, they're not going to be able to. It's either an all or nothing thing. You either don't transfer any credits and it was, it was worthless what you just went to school for, or you do cr transfer some credit and you don't qualify for the loan forgiveness. We attempted to contact an ITT Tech student, but weren't able to talk with him and ITT Tech officials were unavailable for interview. Closely following the shutdown, OTC hosted a transfer fair, but to date, very few students have enrolled. Get up out of your desk and get a hands-on education at the OTC Career Center for High School Juniors and Seniors. There are 19 career paths to choose from, and it's free. Students earn college credit, and they're prepared to get a job when they graduate. A hands-on education that helps you get a job or a jump start on college is what makes the OTC Career Center a unique high school experience. Talk to your high school counselor or visit otc.edu slash career center to learn more. Many people go to pumpkin patches or corn mazes during the fall, but another popular activity is kayaking. Maddie Jones and Mariah Carrico tell us more. Kayaking is very popular in this area. Um, there's so many places to go to. Uh, Missouri and Arkansas, they're two of the most floatable states in the, in the country when it comes to recreational paddling, fishing. Um, there's so many places to go to from rivers, streams, lakes. And then we have the benefit of having spring-fed rivers here too. You get to see some beautiful places that you, you can't see by foot or so. Um, get to experience the wildlife, the fishing part of it, that's a lot of fun, doing some kayak fishing. 
especially when you hook into you know, a good sized fish, get to fight it. Uh, what I like most about kayaking is it's peaceful and it's a good way to uh, get away all by myself and sometimes I like to go with my friends to get some sun and hang out. I have been doing it for probably about four or five years now. Uh, really when I started working here is when I got into it and it's consumed my life ever since. With us, we have them starting at $2.99, so a really nice kind of entry-level price. They can go as, up to as much as you want, though. Uh, we have our most expensive one is $6,500, but there's a lot in between it too. Anywhere from $300 to 1000 bucks can get you a really nice kayak. Uh, my favorite place to kayak is uh, either Bennett Springs or Buff the Buffalo River in Arkansas because they just have a lot of good views and it's really pretty and away from a lot of people. I do a lot of whitewater kayaking, so I really enjoy kayaking down in Arkansas. Uh, Richland Creek is probably my favorite, but for recreational floating uh, or fishing, the Buffalo River is one of the most beautiful rivers in the country, and the current Jack's Fork and Eleven Point in Missouri are some very beautiful spring-fed rivers that have a lot of cool history and a lot of cool scenery on them. Uh, my favorite time of the year is fall. Uh, the change of colors, the fishing gets pretty good. It gets a lot cooler out, so you're not sweating out there the whole entire time. Um, yeah, I'd, fall is my favorite. Uh, my favorite season to kayak in is fall because all the leaves are falling and it kind of just creates a new kind of like feel for kayaking, I guess. Um, some advice for people who are new to kayaking is uh, if it's in the summer, definitely wear sunscreen. It gets hot. Make sure you have drink lots of water. Um, it's a lot harder to paddle upstream than it is downstream. Madeline Popovich isn't your typical Glendale freshman. I followed her and investigated on her accomplishments. Hi, my name is Madeline Grace Popovich, and I'll be doing a song called For the First Time in Forever from Disney's movie Frozen. Madeline Grace Popovich is a freshman here at Glendale, and her extracurriculars might not look like yours. I've been singing and dancing and acting since I was like three years old, um, and then I started going out to L.A. when I was 10. As of today, Madeline has released two singles and is currently working on her third. Cause you make me feel good. The name of my first one is Feel Good, and then I have Missing Out, and this next one is called A Man Like You, which hasn't been released yet. And I wrote Feel Good last, I guess about a year ago, actually. I feel like as, a, as an artist, I've really grown a lot, especially over the past year. I guess the more experiences that I have, the more that I change as an artist, and the more that my music changes, too. Madeline performs in Branson seasonally. However, she has gone many places outside of Missouri. I get to go to lots of different places. It depends on what I'm doing, but I get to go out to LA where I normally wouldn't go as I am right now. Um, and I have family out there, so I get to see them more because of it. Freshman year, it's not typical to know what you want to do with your life. However, Madeline is very hopeful for her future. I hope to be on Disney Channel and things like that when I'm starting as soon as possible. And I really want to move out to LA. And I know it's like, it's expensive, so you know I'd have to definitely be working out there before I do that, but that's definitely what I want to do. Um, I really can't see myself doing anything else, I guess. Like people ask me what my plan B is, and I really don't, I couldn't really tell you because I really don't see myself doing anything else. Thanks for watching the Glendale 411. Don't forget to check out our YouTube channel and subscribe for more content. Signing out, I'm Meg Keller. And I'm Luke Miller.